In this video, we will discuss the pathology of IgA nephropathy. Firstly, we will study its definition and pathogenesis, and then we will study its morphology in details. So, IgA nephropathy is a type of glomerulonephritis that is caused by IgA containing immune complexes. So, the keyword is IgA, that's why it is known as IgA nephropathy. Now, before moving to the pathogenesis of IgA nephropathy, there is one additional concept to learn here. The point is that some experts believe that IgA nephropathy is a localized variant of hanok schonlein purpura. So what is hanok schonlein purpura? hanok schonlein purpura is actually a systemic vasculitis which is characterized by IgA deposition in mesangium just like over IgA nephropathy. But as hanok schonlein purpura is a systemic disease, so in addition to this mesangial deposition, there are some other features that can be remembered by the mnemonic Japan. In Japan, J stands for joint pain, A stands for abdominal pain, P stands for purpuric rash, and AN stands for NK negative vasculitis. So in hanok schonlein purpura, along with IgA deposition in mesangium, these features can also be present. But in IgA nephropathy, these other features are not appreciated, so IgA nephropathy can be considered as a localized variant of hanok schonlein purpura. Now let's study the pathogenesis of this disease in which we will study that how these IgA containing immune complexes result in glomerulonephritis. So basically you know that there are five types of antibodies in our body that are IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE and IgD. Now the structure of IgA antibodies is such that it is glycosylated by galactose molecules. But in IgA nephropathy there is a defect that IgA antibodies are galactose deficient. This lack of galactose on IgA antibodies alter the structure of IgA antibody in such a way that our immune system does not recognize IgA as self. Resultantly, the immune system develops IgG antibodies against these IgA antibodies. Now the surprising thing here is that IgA antibody itself is acting as an antigen and IgG antibodies are being developed against it as immune response. So this result in formation of IgA IgG immune complexes. Now this IgA in immune complexes have an affinity to bind to the mesangium of the glomeruli. So these complexes get deposited in the mesangium. Now you know that one function of IgG antibodies is to mediate the activation of complement system. So once these IgG and IgA immune complexes induce complement activation, these complement proteins such as C3A and C5A act as chemotactic factors. And in response to these chemotactic agents, the leukocytes arrive at glomeruli to remove these immune complexes. Then in attempt to remove the immune complexes, these leukocytes also cause glomerular injury. Now as glomeruli are being damaged, so it results in leakage of blood that is known as hematuria. This hematuria is the classical feature of IgA nephropathy. Now the damage to glomeruli also disturb the filtration function of glomeruli. So this results in increased level of nitrogenous waste products in blood that is called azotemia. And this decrease in GFR also causes activation of renin and angiotensin aldosterone system in response to decreased filtration. So aldosterone causes fluid retention that results in hypertension. Now this syndrome of hematuria, azotemia and hypertension is collectively known as nephritic syndrome. But this complete triad of features of nephritic syndrome is present rarely in IgA nephropathy. Rather most of the patients present with isolated hematuria. Now regarding IgA nephropathy, there is one very important point which I want to mention that in IgA nephropathy, the development of hematuria or development of nephritic syndrome is in the form of episodes. For example, there may be one episode of hematuria or blood in urine and then there are periods of recovery and then again after some time another episode of hematuria develops. But why this nephritic syndrome or hematuria is developing in episodes? The answer is that you know that the root cause of IgA nephropathy is abnormal IgA protein. And you know that IgA antibodies are secreted only when they are infections of respiratory or intestinal tract because IgA antibodies are secretory antibodies. So they are mainly formed in intestine and respiratory tract in response to infections of respiratory and gastrointestinal tract. So whenever there is episode of infection of respiratory tract, there is secretion of these IgA antibodies and the, as these IgA antibodies in this disease are galactose deficient, so after the respiratory infection, the pathogenesis of this disease starts once again and results in hematuria or nephritic syndrome. That's why nephritic syndrome in IgA nephropathy is episodic. So let's review the pathogenesis once again. In IgA nephropathy, these IgA antibodies are galactose deficient. So the body does not recognize IgA antibodies as self and immune system develops IgG antibodies against these IgA. These IgG-IgA complexes deposit in the mesangium and cause complement activation. 
This complement activation recruits leukocytes at the glomeruli and the glomerular damage by leukocytes result in hematuria. Now let's come to the morphology of IgA nephropathy. For light microscopy, the keywords to remember are mesangial thickening. Because you study in the pathogenesis of this disease, that this disease results in deposition of IgA containing immune complexes in mesangium. So the keyword is mesangial thickening, which means increased amount of mesangium in the glomeruli, both due to mesangial deposits as well as due to reactive proliferation of mesangial matrix. And keep in mind that there are three patterns of mesangial thickening in this disease. First is focal mesangial proliferation in which mesangial proliferation is taking place only at some foci. Second is diffuse mesangial proliferation in which mesangium shows diffuse proliferation. By diffuse proliferation here I mean that proliferation of mesangium occurs not only at some points, rather it occurs in all glomeruli at all foci. The third pattern is rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis which is the most severe type of glomerulopathy and we will study its detail separately in another video. So in light microscopy of IgA nephropathy, you see mesangial thickening that appears as focal mesangial proliferation, diffuse mesangial proliferation, and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis. Now on electron microscopy, you see mesangial deposits. This is similar to what you see in the light microscope. And at last, in immunofluorescence, the staining will be positive for IgG and C3 in the mesangium. Because this disease is also mediated by IgG antibodies and complement activation. But the additional point to remember here is that unlike all other immune mediated glomerulonephritis, IgA nephropathy occurs not due to classical pathway of complement activation but by alternative pathway. So early proteins of classical pathway will not be stained. The last point about IgA nephropathy is that this IgA nephropathy is seen in increased frequency in people with celiac disease and liver disease. So if IgA nephropathy occurs secondary to these diseases, it is called secondary IgA nephropathy. So this concludes our discussion on IgA nephropathy.